So the last time I mentioned lock screens on Linux, I talked about how I use a program by the name of Better Lock Screen, which is just a really nice looking lock screen that you don't have to configure like something like S-Lock or i3-Lock. So let's just have a quick look at that one. So it looks a little something like this. So if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So as always, here is the GitHub page for better lock screen. So let's just have a brief look through this one before we get into anything else. So it is a simple and minimal lock screen, not obviously as minimal as something like S-Lock, which is just a red screen. And then when you type something in, it'll change to blue or with i3-Lock, which is a different red and has like a thing that will tell you that it's actually putting in a password, but this one is actually a really nice minimal lock screen that's actually functional. So you've got the time on here. I think you can disable that. I don't have it disabled, but it'll also tell you if you're typing your password like i3lock does. So this is actually a fork of i3lock. And there's a couple of different effects you can put on the background. So I'm not actually using any effects as you saw, but this one right here, we can actually blur the image and Another reason why this is actually really cool is because of some of the caching features that it actually does to make it so your lock screen will actually load a bit quicker. Because applying these effects is obviously going to take a bit of effort if you don't do that. So let's just have a look down here and have a look at the requirements. So this is actually a fork of a fork of i3lock. So it's a fork of i3lock color, which is a fork of i3lock. Doesn't really matter. Just download the stuff that it says you need to actually download. Or if you're on... Arch, you can download the AUR package, it'll pull in those dependencies for you. Also, Debian and their derivatives have a thing here, so you can check that out. Void also is a way to install it, and if you're on anything else, then you have to just do the manual installation. But if you don't want to use the AUR package on Arch, then you can go through this method right here, and then go through the configuration, I guess? I'm not actually sure. I just installed the AUR package just because it's easier. Okay, so let's just have a brief look at some of the options that are available because that's where this actually becomes a really interesting program. So we'll jump over to my second screen just so it's a bit easier to see everything. Kill the compositor as always and then I don't think there's a man page for it so we'll look at better lock screen dash H. I'll just pipe that into less so it's a bit easier to see as well. Okay, so if we look in here, we've got obviously the help, that's not too important, but where stuff starts to get important is with updates. So if we look at this, it's going to update the image cache. So what this program will actually do is it'll actually cache the effects that have been added to the different images. So the reason that it does that, as opposed to just applying them when you lock your screen, like a lot of other lock screens do. And I think you can do that with like i3 fork as well. But the benefit of actually doing it like this is that it's very costly to actually apply those effects all the time. So if you're not going to be changing your wallpaper all the time for your lock screen, why not just cache all of those effects in saved images? So you can have a blurred version, you have a dimmed version, you have a dim blurred version. So instead of actually having to apply those effects every time you lock your screen and then having to wait for image magic to do its work, you can just save copies of those images and then run whichever one you need. So we can also just lock the screen and set which of the effects we want to use. If you don't set any effect, it's just going to show the wallpaper directly. We can suspend the system. We can set a different wallpaper. You can also set the actual resolution of the image. You can use this after you use updates. So if you've got an image that's, for example, not in 16 by 9 and you want it to actually be, or you want it to be not 16 by 9 because you're on like a 16 by 10 monitor, usually it's going to pick up the actual resolution perfectly, but maybe there's some reason why you actually want to run it at a different resolution. One of the reasons why you do that is because of the way that actually handles dual screen monitors. And this isn't a problem with the program. This is actually a problem with just how Xorg works to begin with. So if you didn't know, when you run two monitors, the way that Xorg treats it is it actually treats it as two monitors that are literally next to each other and attached together. So if you have two 1920 by 1080 monitors, it'll actually treat it as a 3840 by 1080 monitor, which will get in the way of actually updating your image cache. And I tried that off screen and actually caused a bit of a bug. So what you'll want to do there is either unplug one of your monitors and then update the image, 
or you can set a custom resolution at like 1920 by 1080 and then it'll actually load up the image properly. Either way, either solution will work pretty much. And then you can also set the blur intensity with this. So by default, it's set to one. I'm not sure what one exactly means, but you can set it to three or 0 0.5. I assume it's gonna do whatever image magic does with its blur. So you'd probably have to look at the image magic documentation to actually see exactly what those mean. And then you can also set the text to show on your actual lock screen. I don't think I have any text set, so it'll just use whatever the default text is, which I don't think it shows anything by default. So yeah, anyway. So let's just try out a couple of these options. So I will probably shouldn't have used less now that I think about it just so I can see it, dash H. Okay, so let's use this, what are we gonna use first? So if we just test this lock option, so better, lock screen dash L. Because I showed just a regular one before, let's just show it with blur. So we run this and we have a blurred version of the image. So that doesn't look too bad to be honest. If, let's see if I can get my password in correctly. I'm gonna get this wrong, aren't I? Wow, I actually got it right. Okay, so also we can see in here that it's now done something weird with the image cache because of my dual screen setup. Hopefully that doesn't break if I run that again, no? Okay, so I'm not sure why it's, whatever. It's weird like that sometimes. I think it's caching it for my dual screen setup. So it'll be quicker like that. I'm not sure though. But let's just try out some of the other options. So we've also got the dim option with this. So that's just a slightly darkened version. I don't think you can set the intensity of the dim. It doesn't look like it, no. And then there's also the dim blur. So run that one and it does exactly what it, you'd expect it to do pretty much, nothing too special there. So we can also set the blur and the actual resolution with our update of our image cache. So if I run this, it's going to actually break the image. As I said before though, hopefully it'll be fine if you just use a single monitor, but let's just go and see what it does. So if we go config, and wall. So this is where I'm actually storing my wallpaper. So I actually store a copy of my wallpaper separate from my actual images directory, just so it's a bit easy to load up. But obviously if you don't do that, then you'll have it wherever you store your images. And so let's set the actual blur. So we'll set that to, I don't know, three. And then we can also set the resolution. Hopefully this doesn't break because I also had a weird problem where it broke when I set the resolution before. So is that, the correct format, yep, okay, cool. We'll run this, I'll cut back to when it's actually done. Okay, so now I've actually applied those effects. So if we run this lock screen again, and we go dash L, and we use the blur option, run that, and now it's really blurred. Okay. I haven't actually used the dash W option, but I assume it's just gonna change whatever the default is. So if we were to use dash W and go blur, so we do that, and now if we run dash L without putting in any of the options, I assume it's just going to use the blur by default, but I'm not sure. Let's see what it does. No, it doesn't. Okay, I'm not sure what that option actually does then. You can also set the lock screen background as wallpaper to set wallpaper. That's not a sentence. Okay, I don't know if that actually does anything then. Huh. Anyway, let's try to set this text and see what that does. So dash T, uh, this, this is a lock screen. So if I run that, okay, cool. So now if I go dash L, do I have to run them together? Is that how that works? Maybe that's how that works. Lock screen. I, I haven't actually tried out most of these options. I usually just run it with dash L just so I can get a lock screen. So. Yep, okay, so that actually changes the text down the bottom there, if you can notice that, right under the time. I don't know why I pointed to it. You're not gonna be able to see it. Uh, put the password in correctly. So that's probably what the dash W option does as well then. So you can probably set the actual wallpaper setting with the dash W option or just through the dash L option. I'm not sure why they both exist then. That seems like a kind of redundant option. I don't know, anyway. So what you might wanna do, if you didn't watch the previous video I did on lock screens, is actually set this as your lock screen to use when you actually go into sleep or suspend mode. So I'm just gonna briefly show you how to do that. So if we have a look on the GitHub page again, it actually shows an example of how to set this up. 
So when you download just the Git repo, you actually can get a already set up uh, system D job thingy. So if you just clone this, then you can actually copy this into exactly where it needs to be. So if we look down here, I've already got a slight modified version of it set up already. So what it says to do is copy that better lock screen at service into your Etsy slash systemd directory. So let's just go ahead and look in there. So in Etsy, where is it? So we just CD in Etsy slash systemd slash system. Okay, so if we look in here, if I just go ls, we can see that we have this better lock screen service. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is actually enable that for my current user. So I just have to disable my other one. So I will just do that briefly. Okay, so now that I've disabled my other lock screen, basically all we have to do is the opposite of what we have here. So if we look in here, it's just system CTO enable better lock screen at and then for the current user. So if we just change this up a little bit, so enable. And then instead of doing S lock like I had before, better lock screen. And then we'll just go dash dash now so it'll run straight away. So I'll run that and as we can see, everything's gone black for a second. Now we are on the lock screen. So run that and there we go. Now we are back in and we have a lock screen that'll run every time my system goes into sleep or suspend. If you want a more in-depth look at that, go have a look at my video on S lock and I'll actually properly explain it. But for this one, I'm not gonna bother explaining it. I'll just show you how to set it up. Okay, so as I said, the reason I like this lock screen is it's very minimal pretty much. It's not as horrible looking as something like S lock or the default i3 lock, but it looks nice for what it is. And it's not like real bloated like something like the mate lock screen or any of the desktop environment lock screens. I don't need a place to click to type in my text. Just give me a screen that I can type on and unlock my screen and just have it look relatively nice. And that's honestly enough for me. I don't really need anything else that's there. So I like better lock screen. I know that it's based on i3 lock or it's forked from i3 lock, but it actually doesn't have any dependencies on i3. So I'm running BSPWM. You can run i3 lock and not really worry about anything else. All it'll download is i3 lock and maybe some random little dependency if you don't already have it installed, but none of them are actually for running i3. So don't worry about that if you don't like having dependencies on things you don't actually run. So I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to go over in this video. I might do another video on a different lock screen, maybe one of the desktop environment ones if I feel bored or something, or if you've got anything else you want me to do, leave me a comment down below and I will get to it at some point. So if you want to see those videos when they come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video is in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all of my alternate platforms to YouTube. There's actually a couple that I'm on now. So library is still my main focus though, but check out those links down below. I have also got all of my social links if you want to chat with me anywhere. My Discord's actually becoming pretty active recently, so go check that out if you want to join that. And I've also got my support links if you would like to support the channel. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, so I'm out.